Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to St. Robert's Day Game Pickup Podcast. In this episode, I am chatting with James Tusk, and we are comparing different day game stops. London front stop, opening a girl while she's coming towards you, opening standing girls, or maybe even walking with the girl. We are discussing why is it that new day gamers choose to open standing girls, choose to open girls while they're coming towards them, or even walk with the girls, and... When is it okay to stop a girl while she's walking towards you? Because there are cases when that's okay. When is it okay to walk with the girl? There are a few exceptions when that's actually a good thing to do. But also I explain why even though sometimes it's okay to walk with the girl, I never let my students do that while I'm coaching them. But at the same time I explain them when is it okay. Um, We also talk about why you should only use London front stop while you're learning and at which point in your evolution of the day gamer you should start or you could start using other stops. This podcast, just as many of the previous ones, are coming to you from Mexico. I'm back on the East Coast on a small beach town near Playa del Carmen where I'm taking three days off and just chilling on a beach with a girl I'm dating in Mexico. So I'm on the east coast of Mexico because I'm coaching the last students in Mexico. I just coached one and I'm coaching one other one on the next, uh, on the next weekend. Well, it's spring break, so it's, it's, it's the best time to do that. And uh, honestly, after spending the last three months in Mexico, I'm kind of done with it. So after coaching the students, I'll be heading back to Europe. I'll, heading, I'll be heading to a few places in Balkans and then... When Europe starts opening up more, I'll be hitting more cities, some of the very well-known cities for day game coaching. So guys, if you're from Europe and you are thinking about getting some day game coaching in Europe, then hit me up, send me a message, and I'll tell you the cities that I'm going to. But the first city where I'll be coaching will be Belgrade, Serbia. where That's the city with some of the hottest, if not the hottest girls in the world I've seen, but also... They are girls that are fairly tough to day game. They're not really receptive in the beginning, but once you break through that first, that first minute of, uh, I don't know how to even call that, it, they, they become pretty nice and I'm pretty open. So, And I actually believe that if you can learn day game in Serbia and get results there, then any other place in the world will seem like a walk in a park. I've always been saying that, guys, don't go to Serbia if you're going solo. You're just going to get your ass handed to you on a silver platter. You're going to get destroyed. Uh, While well, I'll still agree, actually, that that's true. And guys shouldn't travel there solo unless they're pretty advanced. Uh, well, at the same time, I think it is an okay city for coaching. I've coached the guys uh, there before. Uh, if you're afraid that after five blowouts you'll start crying in a corner then maybe this isn't the city for you but if you think that you have a thicker skin and you actually want to learn day gaming you want to learn day game while seducing some of the hottest women in the world and knowing that if you succeed there then other cities will seem fucking easy then this is the place to go and if you want to find out more about that then send me an email to robert at st robert that blog it is robert at strobert.blog or just head over to my website strobert.blog and on the top menu click learn day game and if you don't know that yet then we have a telegram group chat with around 200 day gamers from all over the world so if you want to chat with other day gamers that are learning or already know some stuff then that's basic that's that's definitely a place to be at or if you want to find some wings when traveling that's definitely also a place where you can do that. If you want to join the group chat, then again, head over to my website, strobert.blog, and sign up for the mailing list. And in the welcome email, you will get an invitation link to join the group chat. And if you are actually going out and getting some numbers, but are really struggling to convert those numbers to actual dates, and, and you don't know what the fuck am I doing wrong, I have so many numbers, but they're not coming out with me, then check out the free online video courses I've created on texting, texting basics, and texting advanced. Both are available for free on daygamecourses.com. And guys, with all of this being said, enough intro, and let's get down to the conversation with James Tusk about different day game stops. Hey guys, so we're back for another episode with 
Mr. St. Robert. Mr. St. Robert. Hold on, I'll start. I'll start again because it's uh, it's just started recording now. Hey guys, we're back. Another podcast episode with St. Robert. Wait, wait, wait. The, when you said the first word, you brushed the microphone, so it was really now real, really loud. Oh, okay, we'll start. Hey guys, so we're back again for another podcast episode with St. Robert. How are you doing, Chief? Hello, I'm sitting on a beach in Porto Escondido, Mexico, looking at the ocean, drinking a michelada, a beer drink with, uh, it's like Bloody Mary with a beer. It's uh, one of the most disgusting drinks I've had, but I wanted to give it another try. You know, like, I quite like, I've, I've got a thing for, for the michelada. I like the spice in the drink. I know the Mexicans drink it for their, their hangovers quite a lot. I'm, I'm a fan of it. Uh, it's it's not some drink I'd have like three or four of, but just one to get to get you started on a on a lazy sunny afternoon. I think is is pretty tasty. Well, it is uh, around noon here in in Puerto Escondido, so I think I'm drinking it at the right time of the day, and it is Friday, so I can slowly get the day started with a few coffees on a on a michelada. That's cool. I'm sitting in my apartment in Rio de Janeiro, so I'm here at the moment. I've been here for a week. And it's been pretty cool. We had the madness of carnival. It wasn't quite Rio carnival as I know it, but it was fucking busy, lots of hot girls. And I'm here in Rio for at least another 10 days. And then what I'm gonna start doing is traveling around. So probably gonna go to a city called Recife, a city called Fortaleza, and a city called Porto Alegre. Um, and I'm, I'm here with a guy that I used to work a lot with and, and still do called Sam from Fluid Social. Uh, cool guy, but he's been living in Rio, so it's, it's been cool to catch up with him. But today, we're going to be talking about da, 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 the most important part of the initial part of this whole process of, of day game and dating, which is the first brick in the wall, the, the, the stop, the approach. So we're going to be talking about the difference between front stop the girl, you know, waiting for her to walk past and run around and stop her, versus... Some guys like to walk alongside her. Some guys like to kind of just stop her straight away if she's walking towards her and then just kind of put the hand out. And we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of these different approaches. And I guess what we would advise guys to be doing. So our personal take on it and what's worked for us. Um, but I mean, just to begin with, with uh, Robert, how, how important is, is getting the stop down correctly in your opinion uh, I believe it is the single most important thing guys have to learn and uh, honestly when I coach people even guys that have experience day gaming we will spend the first at least two hours focusing on their stop because even if they're like experienced day gamers they they make mistakes in a stop and you can see that the girls walk around them girls don't stop it's it's the single most important first thing guys have to learn and the, the importance is just i can't even describe it in words like if that is wrong then if, if your stop is bad then whatever else you do in a set isn't important you're not gonna save a shitty stop uh, up, unless you're in a really easy place where, where girls are super reactive to day game of course yeah, I think you can get away with things a lot more in, in more relaxed environments. So, for example, we've been taking students out in, on the beach. You know, it's a very lazy kind of, uh, you know, walk along the beach in Rio, Copacabana Beach, Le Blanc Beach, up in the beach. And the girls are like, it's fucking hot, right? It's 35 degrees, sun's out, girls are wearing bikinis. We look like gringos, so obviously we have value, we stand out. You can get away with shitty stops because the girls are walking super slow. So even if you fuck it up, you can kind of, you can save it because the, the speed of life is very slow. But if you're walking along in, in snowy Moscow, right, and you see that 10, she's got her headphones in, she's got wrist, resting bitch face, she's storming along because she's late to a meeting. You cannot get away with a shitty stop. You know, these very attractive, high value women, cold environment, other externalized factors that are going to complicate things. Your stop needs to be on point. I agree entirely that it's, you know, it's the first brick in the wall. If you're making like a strong, solid foundation for the rest of it to, to springboard on, your stop has to be completely on point. It's that halo effect as well of they remember the first few seconds when they meet someone. And this, these are controllables, right? So a lot of what we teach actually is out of our control in a lot of ways, you know, because you can't really control, um, you know, whether the girl has a boyfriend or whether she's just not interested in you because, you know, for whatever reason. But you can control 
how your eye contact is. You can control your body position. You can control the speed of your speech and your smile and, and these elements at the beginning. So, uh, yeah, I think it's super important to get it on point. Let's run through the different nuances of the approach. So, I mean, what would you what would you personally recommend, Robert, as, as the, the way you teach students approach-wise? Uh, uh, well, first, they would usually ask me questions like, well, can I ask a girl that's actually standing, or can I open a girl that's sitting, or can I stop her while she's walking towards me? Can I walk with her? And they would first want to do all of those things, before they actually do a, a strong front stop. So actually, first thing I would do, I would explain them why while learning opening seated girls or standing girls are not the best ideas and why also they sh I, I would explain why a girl that's coming towards them, like you shouldn't open her while she's walking towards you. Like I would very clearly, I would make it very, very clear why those are very big mistakes in learning. And only when they understand that, I would start teaching them the nuances of, of front stop and uh, and why that is so important. So when we say front stop, what we mean is the difference here is we, we teach the stop where the girl walks past us. If she's walking towards us, she walks past us. And then we kind of circle back around and get in front of her. Um, May uh, yeah, go ahead. May maybe let's define like so that while we're talking about this maybe let's d define names like what is what so we can call the stop that we're talking about where we let a girl pass and then we run around her like the old school london stop you can call it mm -hmm. the london stop mm -hmm. and when a girl is uh oh they're making some cocktails right next to me so that's it's a bit okay loud. no worries uh and when a girl is coming uh, towards a guy and instead of letting her go letting her pass he opens her right as she's coming towards him, like how can we call that? Do you have like a name to use for that? <laughs> Scare the shit out of her stop. <laughs> <laughs> like we can just say like open a girl that's coming towards you. Yeah, I, uh, I, I kind of I kind of want to call it a front stop because it is kind of like just jump in front of her, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we'll, that... we'll get like because it, it's historically it's gonna be such a big mess because of how the term has been used historically, and and if we start calling that a front stop, then. We're going to have several things called front stops and, and the whole audience will just go fucking nuts and not understand what the fuck are yeah, these two idiots talking you, about. Yeah. Okay, so we'll call the, the, prop, the one we teach, the one we have, yeah, from, from the London day game model, we'll call that the London stop. Um, and we'll just call it the uh, in your face stop. You know? In your face stop, yes. Okay, let's call it in your face stop. You are kind of getting in, in, the, in the girl's face and often it scales the girl. Would there be any circumstances you recommend guys can use this and can get away with it? Uh, there are actually a lot of circumstances they can use that in. If uh, if it's in a country where they react very well to day game or if it's on a beach, uh, I think, or, or maybe, yeah, mostly easy countries and beach, I think there is nothing wrong with that. But the biggest reason, especially when guys start learning why I'm so much against it, is a classical London front stop, especially if you are 100% in front of the girl, hand out, good eye contact, good smile, good posture, it is scary. It's scary to do that stop. And uh, a lot of the times I notice that guys don't want to do it because it's scary. So the first thing that London Front Stop teaches you is to overcome that fear and make an overly aggressive stop. If I see that the students are a bit too much in their head and, and struggling with that a little bit, what I would say, what I would make them do is I would actually make them do the London Front Stop in an, like a stupid, overly exaggerated fashion where they would be these like jumping monkeys almost too high en too much energy too 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 high energy like all of, like kind of do it 110% mm -hmm. just so that they would really overcome the fear and really have this great high energy and and it it changes the vibe they have whereas if they use other stops they don't really overcome the fear and they're still a bit scared so it's harder for them to get the voice to the right pitch it's harder for them to have the right posture because they're they're still scared they're not really putting themselves out there they're not putting like their balls on a the line and, and being mm -hmm. this overly aggressive day gamer 
Mm-hmm. So that's number one why I think it's so important because guys are scared and it's so scary. So it teaches you to show you good balls and this is what you want and and hey girl, what's up? Like let's chat. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a it's almost like a baptism of uh, fire, like a ritual you must go through of manning the fuck yeah. up because a lot of guys they get into this having never really expressed their intention with women. They've never really put themselves on the line. And it is about, you know, scaring the shit out of yourself, like getting right in front of a hot girl and putting your feelings on the line as well, saying like, hey, I had to come and say hello. I think you look great because guys are not used to, to doing that. Very rarely now, uh, I've been doing this for a while, a number of years, very rarely now do I actually go up and say, you look nice. I usually now just walk up and say, hi, I want to say hello, James, or hi, my name is James and you. And I'm kind of sub-communicating exactly what I want. But for the first year, I was all about just completely, completely direct. So I think it's it's a, it's 100% legit. You have to go through that process. We're skipping around a bit on this podcast, but hopefully we'll give give guys some value. But what would be the key? Let, let's take, um, before we kind of dissect the other, you know, the in-your-face stop and the walking alongside stop. Mm-hmm. With, the stop that, with the stop that we teach, the London front stop, what are the key elements that we should be, and when we next meet up, maybe we can do a demo, a hilarious demo yes. video for guys, yes. um, where we like make a load of scarecrows in the field and pretend they're women, and then start front stopping them or something like this. <laughs> if we're in the, the the wild west or something, if we end up in El Paso, Texas. But what are the key elements, just to describe to guys, to to simplify it? What are two or three key elements they need to get on point for the London front stop? I like how you're saying we're going to make a few scarecrows. You're embracing the fact that I'm refusing to do in fields because I'm <laughs> going to... Hey, back it's adaptability. Would, You've got to be adaptable. I wouldn't, right? I wouldn't want my sister to be on an infield. And, and yeah, that's going to... But I like how you're embracing that, my, my political ethical stance <laughs> uh, yeah definitely one uh, the biggest thing is you have to be 100 percent in front of the girl uh you can like you can open from the side or even from the back with a tap of the shoulder or being like 50 percent in front of the girl but if you learn a stop like that it will work in some environments it will work in places like prague or poland or even in london it will work very often um like places like Baltics, places like uh, Mexico. It will work in a lot of places, but if you want to learn a stop that will work you from places like Beach in Mexico or New York City or Serbia, you have to learn it right. And the first thing is being 100% in front of the girl. That means you look at the path the girl was the girl was on and you have to be right in front of her 100 percent and you have to pay attention what does it mean to be 100 percent in front it means your feet have to be kind of parallel to her feet if if that makes sense sure like squared up your shoulders have to be squared up as well you can't have your shoulders at like 30 degrees or whatever because in places that are really tough for gain Let's, I, I love New York as example, because in New York, if your shoulders aren't straight, the chick will walk around you. That's it, if they're not squared. She will use it as a weakness and she'll walk, walk around you. In places like Serbia as well, I mean, Serbia teaches you to do the strongest of, of front stops just because unless your stop is perfect and really, really strong, you're going to get blown out 10 times in a row instead of five times in a row. Uh, so number one, really really in front of the girl uh second thing a lot of guys uh, think they are doing right but if they ask someone to look uh, to take a look at at that would be the posture especially the taller guys if you are like maybe over one meter 80 even more uh 180 that is like six two six six one maybe i don't know something or like six feet but anyways if you're really tall uh pay attention to your posture because even guys that otherwise have decent game, I, I recently coached a guy in Playa del Carmen and he was he had decent game already when, when he came, but he never knew his posture was fucked up. And as soon as we fixed that on day one, he just started getting better results because once you fix your posture, once you're really straight up, you feel stronger, you feel more masculine. You are you are there. You're showing this is who I am. I'm 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 and I'm I'm owning this. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a big thing. And um, what else? Leave enough distance, but not too much, maybe like a bit more than extended arms length uh, away so that she has enough 
time to stop. That's I think is important. And when guys run like they run behind the girl and then run around the girl, sometimes mm-hmm. a weird mistake they make. They would when running, kind of when when passing the girl when they're running, when they're passing the girl, they would leave like three meters from her from from them to the girl, which is weird. You have to be pretty close to the girl. I would say no more than like half a meter. Uh, that's uh, one and a half feet from from the girl, like shoulder to shoulder when you're passing her. I think that's also one of the things. Uh, yeah, do you have anything to add or? Yeah, no, just to elaborate on some of your points, I think the posture is really good. I think what guys should do is get their, their friends to film them, stopping a few girls. You don't necessarily need the audio. If you can get the audio, it's brilliant because you want to work on, you know, that open, slowing down your voice, not being nervous. Um, but yeah, with the posture stuff, Strong eye contact, a smile, super important to smile. A lot of guys run up and they get right in front, but then they, go, they scare the shit out of the girl. And then later they see themselves on camera and they realize they look like a fucking serial killer. You've got to like smile, genuine smile with the eyes. We call it smizing. I practice that in the mirror. That's a very big thing. And often because we're nervous, we look a bit more serious. So it's extra important you smile. Genuine smile, um, slowing down the speech, body language, yeah, shoulders back, uh, chin up direct eye contact stances like shoulder width shoulder width apart in terms of how you stand uh directly in front of the girl i think is key uh especially to begin with um after a while you can kind of maybe go off uh, you can walk off to the side a bit and come close to her like shoulder to shoulder but the beginning it's got to be right in front um yeah when you come around the girl not not giving massive amounts of space like i like the idea i think it was from torero where he puts out his arm and uses it to pivot round um, and, yes. and get in front of the girl. And that, that, that should be the length as well. You're almost using your arm to wheel round. And then, yeah, as you said, when you stretch out your arm, it's almost like you're an arm's distance away. It's better to be slightly further away and then you can move closer rather than if you, if you get too close, it scares the shit out of her. It's very hard to recover from that. Um, so yeah, I, think I actually... Go ahead. Uh, I I created a video a month ago on 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 all of this stuff about about the perfect day game stop and right. uh, I, I go pretty deep explaining it's a it's a short seven minute video but it it explains basically everything guys need to know about about the stop so uh, and it includes everything that we that we that we spoke about that we spoke about here right. Um, there are like the, I think the, the mistake people make here is um, thinking day game is all about running around front stopping girls. Oh, not front stopping, London stopping girls. That's not yes. true. I mean, I'd say normally outside of COVID or even during COVID at times, seventy percent of my approaches are not actually uh, London front stops. They are uh, seeing a girl in a cafe. And like when I go in to buy a coffee, sitting down with her, like just next to her at the same table or stopping girls in shopping malls who are working in, in clothing stores. So there's a there's a, a misunderstanding that day game has to be running around in London stopping girls. That's what people see on YouTube and that's what's easy to film. So that's what's there. And it's ballsy and people like the ballsiness. So they like to watch it. But yeah, people don't understand that day game really is about being socially fluid and, and, and calibrating to any situation. So it doesn't mean, matter. It doesn't matter where the girl is. You're gonna you're gonna see her if she's a hot girl. You figure out how to go and you know start the conversation with her. So I, I just want to put that point in there. But what about yeah? What would be some just circling back round to the front stop? What would be some circle? So sorry, the in your face stop where the guy just sees the girl. She's walking towards him and he immediately stops her. What would be some circumstances you'd work with students where you'd, you'd say that's acceptable to be doing? Uh, when working with students. Actually, I would tell them to never do that while I'm teaching them uh, right. for one simple reason. I want them to learn the classics. Okay. Of, of course, we would do coffee shops and all of that shit, but I want them to learn the classics. And if they want to later stop the girl while she's coming towards them, I have nothing against that. They can do that on their own time. It's much easier to do that. Maybe on like day three, day four, I would let them do the in your face stop but but not sooner than that i really want them to drill the classics and just as you said like uh, most of your stops are coffee shops and, and different places uh, exactly and that is that is that is what guys should do once they're getting results once they have at least 10 day game plays i would say you can start experimenting but 
my opinion is guys have to learn the classics they have to be perfect at the classics and then they can once they know that they can do whatever the fuck they want okay i'd say to add to that i'd say that the circumstance where i happily let guys you know use the, the in your face stop would be if it's a very lazy environment for example where i am in rio by the beach it's very hot the girls are coming very slowly towards the guys i'm with gringo guys so we stand out we have whiter skin often the girls are very they're looking around a lot and often what happens is they actually notice us from quite far away so it's not like the girl's storming along her, on her iphone and the guy is too much of a pussy to do the london front stop and run round, and he just jumps <laughs> out because he's like fuck i need to stop her it's like oh no the girl has clearly seen us so the guy can just walk up and go hey because the girl's walking so slow along the beach so i, th I think that's this circumstance is okay um Usually, yeah, if the girl's walking super slow towards towards you, can probably get away with it a bit. And it, obviously, if the girl's kind of looked at you and already checked you out, you can kind of get away with a, a bit more, yeah, I guess, for one, one of a better phrase, less technical stop. Those would be the two, two circumstances I'd say that's okay to do. Um, what about, we, we see a lot of guys and we get a lot of students who would come in and be like, oh, well, yeah, I did this boot camp with this dude in the US and, you know, all he does is walk along with girls. So what would be your thoughts on, on, on this type of way of stopping? Because don't get me wrong, like I'm not some purist that is like, you know, I have my way of teaching and you do as well. And we share all of the same principles because we've, we've kind of learned the same stuff. But I'm not saying you can't get laid other ways. But yeah, what would you what, what are your <coughs> thoughts on the walking alongside? Uh, yes, there, there are times when it's fine to walk with a girl. But the risk when teaching the guys, why I never let them do that. There is a very simple reason. So again, guys are scared from the strong stop and they are they, to keep a girl standing when she has to go. You have to force kind of your frame. You have to be you have to have a very, very strong frame. So for guys, it might be easier to walk with the girl to give up their frame of we're gonna stand here and we're gonna chat and and instead they walk with the girl so for them it's the easy thing to do and while it is true that in some cases it, it is better to walk with a girl like let's say she is really legit in a rush and she legit doesn't have time to talk to you and but she's hooked and and it's fine to walk with her in that case but the, the risk the risk i'm taking when when i let guys do that is I would, I think when I day game, I find situations where walking with the girl is the best thing to do, maybe a few times a year, literally, no more than that. So when I, uh, I've had cases where I'm coaching a student and, and I know that, oh yeah, in this case, the best thing to do was to walk with a girl. But if I let him do that more than once, he will build a habit of giving up his kind of, position his frame and choosing to walk with the girl and it will be fear based not because it's the best thing to do so i think <coughs> after guys have after guys have learned all the basics and they're doing really good london front stops and they they have at least 10 day game lays they can walk with girls they can do the in your face stop they can all they can open whatever they want i mean i don't care but they first have to have to really drill the basics. So I would always suggest against walking with the girl. That is a very popular thing to do, but it's much lower energy. It isn't as a, actually, yes, it, you know how when you do a strong London front stop, it's so masculine. It's so like there is this male female polarity and it's so strong. Whereas if you walk with a girl, it's not there. It's, it's much more mellow, softer. So I would focus on teaching, building this strong uh, frame, strong masculine, female, male, female polarity. And it's the same as stopping a girl from a side, like just tapping on a shoulder or tapping on her shoulder from the back. It is very good. I mean, that's what I do in 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 every country where i can get away with that i will do super mellow super chilled out super low energy opens from the behind just tapping on a shoulder and when i do that they stop but if i told a new student who's learning to do that they would not stop they would just walk off because he isn't and and this is like a voo voo magical mental masturbation type of thing where it's hard to explain why those girls don't stop for 
a guy who's learning, but they stop for me. But once you've learned and developed a very strong frame, a very strong male-female polarity, they start to stop. Why, whereas while you're learning, it's not there and they will not stop. So that's kind of my thought process of walking with girls or, or stopping them in the beginning while learning. Yeah, I, and just to add to that, I think uh, I, I completely agree. I think it's very uh, masculine polarization to get right in front of a hot girl and stop her. She feels that energy. It automatically puts you into that, like, this guy is a fucking prospect to be taken seriously. Just human nature, right? You walk alongside someone trying to talk to them. Um, you only have 50% of their attention. You haven't really, you know, the point of a London front stop is, right, a girl is storming, storming along. Uh, she's got her headphones in. She's on the way to work. The point of getting in front of her and giving her a compliment is, is not some to, to look cool. It's some to snap her out what the fuck she's doing and focus 100% of her attention on you so you can start building value. And when you kind of just walk alongside her like a salesman, pitching to her you know that's what those charity guys do you don't have her full attention she doesn't really like she's not she, she might register what you want but you're not really you're not really putting 100 percent of it on the line you've fallen into her frame as well which is she's like oh yeah we're going this way i'm doing this you're welcome to join along you're already having to try and buy value from her and and and, and the dynamic is not correct you know you i want to have that conversation on my terms which is she's going to fucking stop and we're going to have the conversation based on the fact I've told her, you know, I want to meet her and get to know her. So, yeah, I, I don't I never really walk with girls. It's it's different if you if you stop a girl and you have a, a, a you know, London stop and then you have a chat and it's going well. And then you're she's like, oh, you know, I've got to I've, I'm actually running late. Do you mind walking with me for a bit? And she clearly wants you to do that or you suggest it because you've got to go somewhere or you, you're going on an instant date. You can then start walking. But I do not recommend guys just do it to begin with. I think it's pretty low value. That's my personal preference. I know some guys bang on about it, and I know it works for some guys because I've seen it, and I've um, I've had feedback from guys saying, yeah, look, it does work. But for me personally, I like the idea of, of being ballsy and really just snapping them out of what they're doing. Yeah, and there are two more reasons uh, to do strong stops, uh, strong stops, and especially two more reasons to not walk with a girl. And the biggest reason to not walk with a girl, apart from what we spoke about, is uh, just as opening a girl that's seated or a girl that's in a corner. Uh, if you open a girl that's, let's say, standing in a corner and you open her in a way that it's hard for her to leave that corner or she's sitting in a coffee shop, you have to be able to read her very, very well and whether she likes that or she wants you to leave. And, and you have to leave if she doesn't want you to be there. You have to be very, very calibrated. And... Where, so I'm, I, I learned day game in Riga, and in Riga we had this, uh, there is a big, big, big Russian organization that teaches uh, a very different approach to game, but uh, like it still works for some guys, but they would teach you to walk with girls. So we, had, we have a lot of guys in Riga who walk with girls, a lot of guys. And what I would hear from girls that I day game, I would hear so many, I've heard like countless stories about guys that opened them while walking with them and then those guys wouldn't fuck off they wouldn't right. know when to leave the girl alone and girls literally feel threatened a random guy starts walking with her and wouldn't fuck off even when she doesn't respond and would mm. keep trying to get a conversation going so for a girl it's really scary and i think uh, i've never heard of stories of pepper spray or anything like that but uh, I think it's a legit concern also. It, it's it's not a good vibe. Like, girl has to know she can leave any moment. Uh, but she stays because she likes you and because your open was so good and your material was so good. So, yeah, number one, this is one, one big reason. Uh, another, apart from what we spoke, is you have to know when to let the girl go. And another reason to do strong stops, a situation where you should... In my opinion, where guys should never walk with a girl, they should never do the in-your-face stop, and they should only do strong London front stop, is um, on shopping streets. Right. In in places where you have salespeople who are trying to get your attention, and they will try to step stop you from the side, from the side, from the back, while you're coming towards them. They will try to walk with you. Your stop on shopping streets has to be really, really, really strong, and that's another reason where you should ne another situation where you should never walk with the girl, never do any other stop than London mm. front stop. 
Yeah, I agree. That's a really good point. And you, you were in, we both spent time in Plata de Carmen recently. You've got lots of guys hustling, trying to sell drugs to tourists. And yeah, in order to stand out, you have to be doing the front stop. Uh, not the front stop, the, yeah, the front stop. The, the London the, front the, stop, the, yeah. The London front stop, yeah, to, to stand out in a good way. Um, we won't go into the details of like all the different nuances for like opening in different scenarios, like in coffee shops and like, you know, high pressure situations and all of that, because really what we wanted to do with this podcast is talk mainly about the standing walking stops, which guys are synonymous with, with YouTube, but maybe another day we'll go into the nuances of, uh, of different type of opens in, in more, yeah, in different scenarios where the girl's sitting down or whatever, or lying down on the beach or, or things like that. But is there any kind of final thoughts? Uh, for for this particular topic on the stops, uh, I would just say that whatever thoughts or reasons guys have to open with the in your face stop or walk with the girl or open from the side, open from your back, whatever your whatever their reasoning is like, and they might have some deep reasoning. I have heard all of those reasons, and I believe you have heard all of those reasons, and we have very simple explanation like i've heard so many reasons to do that but i have explanations that i give my students or people that i bring with and i tell them reasons not to do it and as soon as they hear my reasoning they're like oh my god yeah that makes so much sense i, I will not open from the back i will not open with in your face stop i will not walk with the girl and whatever your reasoning is don't do it. Learn to do a proper London front stop. And once you have 10 or more lays from day game, then start experimenting. Start doing all of those things, but learn the classics, learn the, learn the typical, most classical day game stop, because that's, that's going to give you so much. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, any hilarious uh, stories or memories from students either succeeding with the London day game stop or failing miserably with different types of stops or anything that stands out in particular? Uh, you know, the, the big thing I can tell, this is a bit of a story, but a bit of a aha moment is when your vibe is bad, and I, especially when I coach guys in, in places like Ser Serbia, Belgrade, Serbia, or, or New York, or any tougher city and you probably I don't know what's what, what what experience you have with your students but there is like a moment by at the end of second day of coaching where they are a bit tired the energy is a bit lower and so they start getting worse results like maybe yeah it's it's usually the second day where the results first day they, they're really good results and the second day kind of there's a dip so the biggest thing that I always tell guys is get back to technical, boring, copy-paste basics and start doing over-exaggerated 110% London front stop. And as soon as they start, restart focusing on the techniques, on the, on, the, on the fundamentals, like slowly they build back up. And when you learn, when they learn these fundamentals and, and these technical approach to the stop, a very simple thing happens. Whenever they take a week or a month or whatever off day game or maybe a year because of a relationship as soon as they get back on the streets they you cannot fake a vibe like mm -hmm. you cannot come up with a vibe but you can remember those techniques and you can re repeat those techniques get results within one day and your vibe will be back up so nice. that would be the big thing i would i would like to say. kind of kind of like muscle memory uh, for going to yes. the gym, but with day. Yes, yes. That's very cool. Um, I just remember one of my worst ever reactions actually was uh, when I tried to do a jump out of, you know, a, 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 a get in the face stop. It was a dark night in a rainy dark night a few years ago, three years ago in November. Um, I think it was around Halloween time, so maybe a bit before. And it was, uh, I was up near Leicester Square, for those of you who know London. It was, uh, you know, the, the streets were dark. It was maybe like 8, 9 p.m. I was going to go meet some friends for a cocktail. And it was a dark, stormy evening. I saw this absolute stunner strutting down towards the street. And I was actually leaning in the shadows against a brick wall in the corner, smoking a cigarette. And uh, I basically, like, she, you know, I just saw her suddenly coming towards me, um, not much notice. And I kind of jumped out. Um, and in hindsight, I must have looked like a fucking demon jumping out of a corner. Um, <laughs> but she was like, oh, get the fuck away from me. Um, scared the shit out of her. 
Um, and then I, you know, I was like, oh shit, you know, jump back into my corner, into the shadows, and then kind of reemerged because she was hot, and I saw her ass walking down the street. So I ran, <laughs> I ran back round and tried to stop her on the side. She was like, fuck off. So it just goes to show, like, it really is important to, um, especially with a hot girl, you, you've just got to get that stop down. You really do. You don't get second chances. Once you scare a girl, it's almost impossible to recover that situation. Even if you see her later, she's got you noted down mentally as that creepy guy. So yes, uh, it's you know it, it, you've just got to tr try and go through the motions. I know for guys listening to this that maybe they've got a bit more experience. They've been doing this for a while. Sometimes you you want to cut corners, you get lazy, and you know you don't want to have to go through the right technique. But when you get sloppy, the results go out the window. And it's not about being a robot. Uh, but it's about knowing what the best course of action is and knowing what gets you the results and what must generate your results and sticking to that and not trying to cut corners. Because human nature is we get lazy, we want to cut corners. And, you know, if you find your results are going down, maybe just go back to basics and just think, right, is my stop on point? Um, am I getting right in front? Am I doing the stop properly? Is my eye contact good? Am I smiling? Is my speech slow? Just that, that halo effect of the first 30 to 60 seconds is so, so, so important. Um, where are you going to be in the next few weeks, uh, Robert? You're at the moment. What's your plan? Uh, so, l let me add one thing on the story you told about opening on a dark, uh, at, at the dark, dark hours of the day. Uh, one, one small thing that, because I've had so many times when girls just freaked out because I opened the middle of the night and they were listening to the music on, on headphones and didn't hear me open and, and just freaked out because all of a sudden I'm in front of them. So one thing that I've changed when opening in the dark, uh, remember I, I told like that uh, not to keep too much distance shoulder to shoulder when you're passing the girl. So I would I would have more distance there, maybe like meter, meter and a half. And I would uh, get the eye contact also as soon as possible, which is important, but I would give her more space when I stop her, maybe more than one and a half arm lengths so that she sees me, she sees me with a smile, with a positive eye contact, and she gets the chance to stop without kind of freaking out. And, and I would probably start with, hey, sorry, I, I, I scared you. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, but I just had to tell you one thing, da 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 okay. um, But the plans for the next few weeks. So I'm in uh, Puerto Escondido now for one more week. I'm going to play Del Carmen to coach a student from Switzerland. But after that, I'm flying back to Europe and I'm flying back to a beautiful country that is uh, scary as fuck for day game. And uh, let's put it like that. If you learn day game there and if you can get laid there, then then you can get laid anywhere. I'm going to Serbia, Bel to Belgrade, Serbia uh, mm -hmm. for maybe maybe a month, maybe more, maybe less. We'll see. Because, uh, yeah. I went there one and a half years ago, and the hotness I saw there, I've never seen anything like that anywhere else in the world up to this moment still. And I want to go back to the hotties, and I want to spend some time there. I have a guy coming over, like an American guy, going over to Serbia to get some coaching. So I'll be at least for a month there. That's cool, man. Yeah, I rate Belgrade. Last time I was there was two years ago, three years ago, two years ago. But they are... Uh... Unfortunately, I was with an American guy and they I was doing lots of filming and then a local newspaper picked up on it and they went fucking mental um, because they're basically low. The, the headline was like this English pig stealing our women, all this shit. Um, <laughs> so I got loads and loads of death threats. So I don't still don't think it's safe for me to go back to Belgrade because you have that one street and there's me high labor and I just know I'll get recognized. Um, but I might be, I'm, I'm tempted to go to Novosad maybe this summer, uh, the second city in Serbia. It's more of a student, yeah. town, beautiful place. So maybe I'll go there for a few weeks and check out what's going on. Yeah, I think as, as long as you don't film, it's a, it's a safe place. No one cares. You're just chatting, chatting with girls. And, and if you're kind of, if you're being calibrated, then, then I think it's a great place to learn. I, I think... It is the place, one place in the world that teaches you really, really, really strong frame. And that's the beauty of the place. If you learn in a place where you need very strong frame, then you can go anywhere else in the world. And whatever you learn in, in Serbia will, will be more than enough in any other place. Like if you can get results in Serbia, anything else will be like walk in a park. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't find it, you know, I've been some places that I found a lot tougher than Serbia, I must say. Like, I didn't think it was, like, a super tough place. For me, the dud countries I always talk about, Denmark, Germany, and Romania, were definitely harder, I found, on a personal Yeah, 
inter yeah. interesting. Yeah, maybe but, that's uh, just my experience. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think the general feedback from, from people is um, it, it's not a beginner place, Serbia, because they are they are very hot women, but they're high value and they know it. And yeah, you, you can't be a fucking person, yeah, basically. I, I always tell guys, like, if you want to go there solo, don't. Unless you have at least maybe 30 day game lays, 20 day game lays, <coughs> don't. You're going to get destroyed there. But if, if guys are going there to learn, then like, it's a it's a good place for coaching, but it's a it's a very bad place for solo for solo day game. That's for sure. Like it's just you're gonna get your ass handed to you, and and that's it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, another cool place you should check out maybe when you're over there is Zagreb. I'm a big fan of Zagreb, and it's also yeah. less less gaming less gamer guys there um, for some reason. Although the beauty is similar and the level of English is the same, very high. So yeah, I'll probably this. travel around Balkans because I'm saying I'll go to Serbia, but you know me. I New like year. to, I like to stay under the radar. Dance around <laughs> there. Yeah, well, one of the most uh, underrated uh, places is is uh, Sarajevo Film Festival in Bosnia. One of the best yeah. parties I've ever been to. Party weeks. It's fucking anything goes, and there's fucking hot girls from all over the Balkans that come into Bosnia. Crazy, crazy place um, during that week. How is uh, English level there? Oh, it's anywhere in the Balkans. So any anywhere former Yugoslavia, Montenegro, Serbia, um, Croatia, or Bosnia, all fluent. Very, very rare yeah. to meet someone who isn't completely fluent in English. Like yeah. it's ridiculously high level. But I wouldn't actually recommend Bosnia outside of Sarajevo Film Festival. It takes place in August usually. I'm assuming this year it may it probably be on. But it's a fucking it's it's un it's unknown about people don't think about it as a place. But I, we went there and it was fucking sick. It's wall to wall hot women all there for a good time the city is partying 24 hours a day it's fucking amazing man. highly recommend it in fact i might even run a boot camp there in all this yeah so maybe we could team up and go there that'd be sick yeah yeah good times um what are we going to be what are the guys going to be tuning in to listen to next week with us what's the topic oh next week they can listen about my specialty my favorite type of girls my dream my <laughs> my hottest sweetest indian most, women it's indian most, women it? you're talking about most, indians most most <laughs> gentle lovers the biggest best hardest working uh, blowjob givers <laughs> borscht borscht cooking uh, submissive stuff loving deep throat capable Russian girls. The Russian. I, I come from, and, and the reason guys should listen to, to that is I come from a country near Russia. So we have a lot of girls that are kind of have Russian heritage or a lot of Russian tourists. I've spent a lot of time in Prague where we were a lot of Russian travelers again, the same for Serbia. And wherever I go, uh, actually a big percentage of girls I open are, are Russians because they are just stunningly beautiful. And guys say that Russian girls are some of the hardest to game. And I have some very strong opinions why that is actually not the case and why for me they are some of the easiest girls to game. And that's what we're going to cover in the next week's podcast. What you should pay attention and think about when gaming Russian girls if you want to get results with them okay that's interesting i look forward to that and uh yeah i'm sure the guys will, will be interested to tune in so yeah take care and we'll see you next week yes bye guys bye well that's it for today guys if you want to join me for some day game coaching in belgrade serbia to practice day game with some of the hottest women in the world or maybe in some other places in europe then head over to my website strobert.blog and click on day game coaching fill out the form there and i'll get back to you soon we'll figure out all the details and if you like this podcast and you're watching or listening to this on youtube then give this video a thumbs up or if you're listening to this on spotify quick click follow or if this is on apple Podcasts, then leave this podcast a five star review and tell other guys what you think all of those things just do one thing. They help me get this message out in front of more people and help more guys learn to meet, uh, seduce and date girls they actually like. And if you want to make sure you don't miss the next podcast episodes or anything else like new videos, upcoming trips, 
events, etc., then make sure you are on the mailing list and you can sign up to the mailing list again at my website, strobert.blog. That's it for today, guys. Bye.